The story begins with a man named Will arriving in Spain, all excited to meet his family for a long-awaited vacation. His dad, Martin, warmly welcomes him, and they start their journey to a waiting boat. Along the way, Will's phone rings with a call from his work, but he politely asks for a short break, knowing that his work calls often bother his dad. When they get to their destination, Will's mom, Lori, his little brother Josh, and Josh's girlfriend, Dara, greet him with big smiles. The whole family is super happy because they are looking forward to having a special dinner together. As they sit around the table, the two brothers talk about their childhood, where they moved a lot because of their dad's job. Lori is really glad to have her family all together, and they make a heartfelt toast to start their evening. However, the mood takes a playful turn when Josh brings up a funny incident from Will's past, making everyone burst into laughter. But this cheerful moment is suddenly interrupted when Will receives a distressing phone call. He looks very serious, and the sadness spreads to everyone around. Finally, he opens up to his family and shares the sad news about his company going bankrupt. Everyone becomes quiet, and uncertainty hangs in the air as Will thinks about what will happen next. He goes off by himself to the seaside. Later, after dinner, Will tries to make things right for dampening the happy mood earlier. He says sorry to his dad, Martin, for the tough situation he's in. In a heartfelt conversation, Martin also says sorry to Will understanding how difficult this is for his son. The next day, the family is out on the sea, but Will is glued to his constantly ringing phone. He reluctantly helps with steering the boat until they finally drop anchor. But Will can't stop thinking about his phone, and this leads to some tension when Martin urgently asks him to take control of the boat. Just then, a fast motorboat comes dangerously close to their yacht. Will doesn't realize the danger, and his lack of focus makes their boat drift without direction because of the wind. Martin panics and shouts at him just in time, so he manages to avoid a bad crash that could have hurt Dara. In the middle of this chaos, Will's phone rings again, but Martin throws it into the ocean without hesitation. This makes them argue loudly, and Will makes a bold decision. He jumps into the sea and starts swimming towards the town, trying to find some peace as their emotions boil over. He quickly stopped at the pharmacy to buy some antiseptic for Dara's wound and then decided to get a drink to quench his thirst. While he stood on the shore, looking at the vast ocean, Martin started feeling uneasy. That same scary speedboat passed by again, making him even more worried. After a short time, Will came back to the beach but couldn't see the family's yacht anywhere. He tried asking the local people on the sandy shore for help, but they spoke fast in Spanish, and he couldn't understand them. Determined, he went into the waves and approached a group of young people, hoping they could assist him. Unfortunately, their words were as hard to understand as the sounds of the sea. Will felt a growing fear in his heart, thinking that maybe his family had left him behind by mistake. He walked along the coast to get a better view, and there, in the gentle moonlight, he saw the yacht drifting alone. When he got on board, he realized that something was very wrong. The boat had no power, and his family was gone. Feeling desperate, Will went to the local police station for help. Inside, he found police officers playing cards and not paying much attention to him. This made him even more frustrated. Finally, he managed to tell his problem to the station's captain, who, after hearing Will's name, made a phone call. The captain now seemed very concerned and told Will to show them, where the stranded yacht was. Under the cover of night, the police officers and Will set out to find the boat's last known location. But their path led them to a stranger who said he knew Will and promised to help him find his family. Will became suspicious and tried to run away. The officers stopped him, and they struggled. Eventually, Will managed to break free and ran off. He took a police car and sped away into the night, with the officers chasing after him. The chase went on until the police officers cornered Will, making him crash the stolen car. They started hitting him hard. Just when it seemed like there was no hope, Martin, Will's dad, suddenly appeared and quickly defeated the attackers, saving his son. With Martin's support, Will bowed up, feeling shaken but grateful to be alive. He urgently asked Martin where Josh and his mom were, but Martin didn't have any answers. With a heavy heart, he revealed a big secret that he was actually a CIA agent. He believed that something from his past had come back to haunt them, 
and put their family in danger. He kept saying sorry, each time sounding more sincere, promising to bring their family back together. In a quiet voice, he got a call on his cell phone, a message from his secret contact in the CIA, telling him to meet secretly. Martin didn't share many details but took Will to one of his safe houses, a place where they could hide from the trouble that was brewing. As time went by, Martin told Will to drive him to a meeting spot where their team leader, Karak, was waiting. Little did they know, there was a quiet sniper getting ready with a rifle at that meeting point. Will and Martin got to the place, and Martin told his son to stay in the car. But before he left, he shared his feelings, telling Will how proud he was of the wonderful son he had become. Martin went over to Karak, feeling suspicious and wondering if she had planned this dangerous situation. The truth came out as Martin explained that the guys they took the briefcase from had kidnapped his family and were threatening to harm them if they didn't return the briefcase within 24 hours. Karak, however, said that the briefcase had disappeared, leaving Martin looking for a solution. As Martin walked back to the car with a heavy heart, suddenly a sniper shot him and he didn't survive. Will, overwhelmed with shock and sadness, crawled over to his fallen father, tears pouring from his eyes. The ruthless sniper, Gorman, saw another chance and aimed his gun at Will. But Will managed to grab hold of Martin's gun and ringing cell phone just in time. Driven by desperation, he ran away before Gorman and his men could get closer. As he ran for his life, Will ran into a police officer, but the officer, seeing Will with a weapon, pointed his gun at him, ready to make an arrest. But before things got worse, Gorman acted quickly and shot the policeman. In response, Will shot at Gorman, but then more police officers arrived. Will ran away again, sprinting desperately until he reached a tall fence. With his last bit of strength, he jumped over it and found safety in a nearby park. As Will ran through the streets, a police officer on a horse saw him and started chasing him. In a surprising twist of events, Will was able to run faster than the big horse, barely escaping getting caught. He found a safe place in a public restroom, trying to catch his breath and understand everything that had just happened. After he calmed down, Will went back into the busy streets. He tried to hide his identity by putting on a hat and sunglasses he took from somewhere. Then he decided to get rid of the gun. He cleverly arranged to get himself arrested at the U.S. Embassy. Inside the embassy, Will told an official about his father's tragic death and the dangerous situation his family was in. But the official didn't believe him and suggested he get a lawyer instead. While they were talking, the official's phone rang, hinting at a conversation related to Will. Feeling discouraged, Will left the embassy, and there he saw Karak waiting in her car. She said she was a friend of Martin and seemed to know a lot about Will, even though he was young. Although he was hesitant, Will eventually gave in to her convincing words because she promised to help save his family. As the car started moving, Carrick started asking questions about Martin's connections to the mysterious briefcase. Will began to suspect that Carrick might not be a friend, so he pretended to be sick and then jumped out of the moving car, disappearing into the busy streets. He got on a bus and put more distance between himself and the city, all while holding onto Martin's cell phone. The phone kept ringing, and it was the same man calling again. Then Will's heart sank when he heard his mother's voice, desperately asking to talk to Martin. In a painful moment, Will had to tell his mother that his father had died, and she started crying. But the man on the other end of the line didn't care about their pain. He still wanted the mysterious briefcase. Determined, Will got in touch with a friend of his dad named Diego. He arranged to meet Diego's niece, Lucia, at Diego's office. When he got to the address, he had his gun ready before meeting Lucia, who seemed nervous. But then, Carrick's agent showed up, and Lucia attacked them with a knife. This gave Will a chance to join the fight and confront his enemies. In the midst of the chaotic fight, the enemy got stabbed in the back but managed to keep fighting Will with his last bits of energy. The battle went on until he ran out of strength and couldn't fight anymore, eventually falling in the heat of the fight. Lucia, still on edge from the fight, pointed her gun at Will, thinking he might be a danger to Diego. But Will quickly explained the dangerous situation and asked Lucia for help in finding Diego. She reluctantly agreed, and they went to Diego's apartment. As they got closer to his door, they saw the entrance was open. 
Will, getting ready for trouble, took out his gun and carefully went inside. There he found Diego's lifeless body on the floor. Will held Lucia close to him, trying to keep her quiet and not let her cries make the already tense situation worse. He heard a faint sound coming from the kitchen, and he went to see what it was. To his surprise, Karak and Gorman were standing there. Fueled by anger and desperation, Will pointed his gun at them and demanded answers about his father's death. Karak calmly explained that Martin had considered giving the mysterious briefcase back to their enemies, which is why he had to be eliminated. Karak offered to help Will find his family, but there was a condition. She wanted to know about Martin's other connections related to the valuable briefcase. Out of nowhere, Lucia burst into the room, firing her gun and starting a chaotic gunfight. Will and Lucia ran away to escape the shooting, with Karak and Gorman right behind them. They ended up on the rooftop, where they realized there was no way down. In a brave move, Will came up with a plan. He tied a rope around Lucia and started lowering her down, but Gorman shot him in the shoulder. Lucia found safety with a stranger who helped her, while Will held onto the rope in pain, narrowly avoiding the bullets and eventually falling to the ground, hurt. Lucia got on her bike, and they fled again. Will's condition was getting worse, but they couldn't stop. Karak caught up with them, causing a big crash. Just as Karak was about to take a deadly shot, a fortunate group of people blocked her view, giving Lucia and Will another chance to escape. Lucia took Will to a nightclub where she asked a friend with medical skills for help. At first, her friend was hesitant, but Lucia begged and eventually her friend agreed and got others to help. They checked Will's wound but didn't find a bullet. So, they had to use a drastic measure to stop the bleeding, which made Will pass out. After several painful hours, Will woke up, still in a lot of pain. While Lucia was looking through his phone, she found a picture of Martin. She was shocked when Will confirmed that Martin had died. Then, Lucia revealed that she knew Martin too, but by a different name, Tom. Martin was not only her father but also Will's half-brother. They both got on a train to go to the place where the briefcase exchange was supposed to happen. Will was still trying to process the fact that Martin had a secret life. He decided to go alone and Lucia understood. She told him she would be waiting at the nightclub, ready to help if he needed it. They said goodbye and Will set off on his own. When Will arrived at the location, he looked around carefully to see if he could find their contact. A mysterious man suddenly appeared beside him and told him to act normal and follow him. Will was cautious but did as he was told, following the man to a car and sitting in the front seat. He was anxious to get information about his family and kept asking questions, but the man reacted quickly and violently. He grabbed Will's neck and choked him until he passed out. When Will woke up, he was tied to a chair, and he was getting punched repeatedly as he tried desperately to convince his captors that Martin was dead. To his surprise, the leader, Zahir, revealed himself as a crazy agent. It turned out that the mysterious briefcase was part of a complicated plan to expose a corrupt CIA agent. Martin and the CIA had fired their undercover agent and taken the briefcase as part of this plot. Will told Zahir that Martin had become a victim of the CIA and Karak's schemes. They were trying to erase all evidence and witnesses to their complicated deceitful plans. Zahar then revealed the painful reality that Will's family was still held captive, and their safety depended on the fact that they were hostages. Zahir was determined to confront Karak and save Will's family. He insisted that Will should lure Karak out into the open before the secret briefcase sale, and he threatened to hand over Will's family to the CIA if he failed. Once again, Will was overpowered, choked, and thrown out of the car, along with a gun, just outside the city. He went back to Lucia's welcoming club, where they were happy to see each other again. They joined forces and planned a strategy to get Karak to come out into the open. While they quietly discussed their plan, the club owner, who was loyal to Diego, heard them and offered to help. Lucia came up with a clever idea. She used her card to pay for drinks and leave a digital trail, hoping Karak would fall into their trap. In just a few minutes, Gorman showed up at the club, but the smart store owner and his friends quickly recognized him, and a fierce fight broke out. Gorman was a skilled fighter, but they finally managed to subdue him after using a taser. 
They took Gorman to the club's basement and started a harsh interrogation. We wanted to know where the briefcase was and when the secret exchange would happen, but Gorman stayed silent. Angry, Will attacked Gorman brutally and ordered the men to punish him more. Will planned for Gorman to seem like he escaped, hoping it would lead them to Carrick. Lucia was behind the wheel of a waiting car as they watched Gorman somehow free himself and escape. Gorman took another car and sped away, with Will chasing after him. Gorman went down an alley where he met up with Karak, and they started their escape, all while Will kept a close eye on them. They led him to an underground parking area, and Will told Lucia to stay in the car while he followed them further. Will watched from a distance as Karak talked to the potential buyers in the dimly lit parking lot. But suddenly, everything turned chaotic when Zahir and his group arrived, telling Will to back off and surrender. Will shouted, demanding to know where his captive family was. The noise reached Karak, and she killed the buyers. All hell broke loose as the crazy agents started shooting, causing a wild shootout. Amidst all the chaos, Gorman saw his chance and grabbed the mysterious briefcase, then jumped into a waiting car. Will, determined to get it back, chased after him on foot. He caught up with Gorman, and they had a fierce fight over the valuable item. In the middle of their struggle, a Mossad agent stepped in and shot Gorman. Lucia, in her car, crashed into Gorman's car, causing a violent collision. Gorman, badly injured, mentioned how surprised he was that Will would be the one to end his life. Karak arrived in her car and rushed toward the abandoned briefcase on the ground. She started shooting at Will, forcing him to find cover. Then, she grabbed the case and escaped. With Gorman dead nearby, Karak scolded Will, calling him an amateur, before speeding away. Will and Lucia started chasing her relentlessly, but Karak knew they were after her and a high-speed chase began. Karak tried to escape by driving through a park, but Will was determined to catch her. He got closer, so Karak started shooting at him. Will didn't give up, but he backed off for a moment. Karak thought she had lost them, but then she got stuck in traffic. What she didn't know was that Will had spotted her. He drove straight at her, causing a big crash into a nearby store. A crowd gathered, and Karak got out of the car and started shooting not only at Will, but also at innocent people. With a lot of effort, Will and Lucia took control of another car and drove away, with Karak still chasing them relentlessly. Their cars battled fiercely, and both ended up flipping over dramatically. Karak, holding the valuable briefcase, got out and approached Will and Lucia, who were struggling to move. In a tense moment, Will tried to reach for his gun, but Karak taunted him. She was about to shoot him when suddenly, a gunshot rang out. In the midst of all the chaos, Zahir and his fellow agents showed up and quickly made sure Will, Lucia, and the valuable briefcase were safe. Zahir, leading the way, guided Will to a very important meeting with his family, who he thought he had lost forever. Along the way, Zahir said something surprising. He admitted that even though Martin had a mysterious past, he would be proud of Will for being so strong. Their reunion was incredibly emotional, with lots of tears and hugs as the family's broken bonds were miraculously repaired. They visited Lucia in the hospital, where Lori and Josh warmly welcomed their new friend. Their brief period of peace didn't last long. A CIA official came up to Will and gave him a passport, offering him a way to go back home where it was safe. Will was still curious about what was inside the briefcase, but the official didn't give him a straight answer. Instead, he hinted that to find out, Will would need to get more involved with the CIA. So the moral of the story is when life throws you a crazy mix of spies, secret briefcases, and family reunions, just remember, laughter is the best spy gadget, and a group hub can disarm even the most cunning villain.